So with the almost definitely confirmed cancellation of FNAF Plus, I decided that now would be the best time to take all of my videos that I've made over the past four to five months on FNAF Plus and mix them together. This is over six videos worth of content. I've tried to edit it down and mix them together to where the transition between episode to episode will feel more natural. This is mainly with the intention to give people a better viewing experience than having to go through a full playlist or to have to watch each individual episode. So hopefully for those who just want to binge something and get caught up on all the FNAF Plus stuff, this video will work for you. So one of the big MVPs of the FNAF Fanverse initiative is FNAF Plus, which is a remake of Five Nights at Freddy's 1 being made by Fiznal. And to be honest, I don't have a lot of hype for it. Like a lot of people really love it. It's actually the first image that appears when you Google Five Nights at Freddy's right now. A lot of things have used it as official artwork and it kind of is going to be official. Um, the game was supposed to come out last year, didn't come out. The game is supposed to be out this year, but now it's labeled to comes out when it's done. We're going full Lincara style with the release date. And for a remake of FNAF 1, I don't really think it deserves this much development time. I am moderately excited to see what FNAF will look like in full 3D, but we've already had had a remake of FNAF 1 with the VR game so I'm I'm not really too excited for this like it's interesting that the animatronics got more realistic designs but I haven't really seen too many big new things since remake to make me interested in it and I know there are going to be big new things because if it was just a straight up remake we would already got it by now and the fact that it's being treated like it's a fan game when it's an official product is kind of bothering me when you hit a deadline that's when the thing comes out. And with the last FNAF thing that went past this deadline, it didn't end well. It, the extra development time didn't work, so I'm kind of worried about this being a bit too ambitious for its own good when it's literally just supposed to be a remake. But what do you feel about this, Luminous? I, I don't know what to think, honestly, because it was supposed to come out a while ago, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's been worked on for quite a bit, and it's still... We've got no new news on it. It just keeps saying release date coming soon. And I'm personally also not hyped for this. Like, I want to check it out, definitely, like some of the other um, Faz vs. Initiative stuff. But me personally, like you said, we've got the VR stuff, we've got the 3D versions of it, so it looks the same as them on that part. And I personally don't care that much for the animatronic redesigns, because it looks like it's trying too hard to be scary. And because of that, it's kind of lacking in looking family friendly for restaurants. Like, I can't imagine really this business doing any good, because kids parents would take their kids to the restaurants and you see this really creepy animatronics they've just leaves like they're not taking their kids to this place look at the chica look at the bonnie like no way in hell i just i don't like the redesigns i'm not really hyped for this it's partially just because of how long it's taken to come out and well, maybe by the time it does come out the extra time will help it it won't be the same as the last time something took too long to come out but i just i really don't know at this point i just wish there was like some kind of update just just give us something let us know where you are in the development process of it now because you just keep saying coming soon and it's been coming soon for months now so i say the reason why i'm not hyped is it's been a while since it had any promising development and i've seen other things do what it's trying to do so it's kind of less of an awe factor. I already seen and played through a complete remake of FNAF 1. I've already seen realistic animatronic designs in both the FNAF VHS horror stuff and in Juniors. So it's really hard to see this game try to do stuff that's already been done better or equally as good in other products. Maybe that's why this is taking so long because of everything else. But I think the biggest reason why this isn't out is because 
the creator of it is a social influencer, they're a streamer, they're a content creator. I feel like their e-presence is kind of impacting how long the game is taking. Same with the Andari dev. I, I feel like that this game could have been out sooner if like a normal developer took it on instead of a FNAF fan. I did a video on FNAF Plus and in that video I talked about my complaints with it and some of my complaints came off very poorly worded and at some points I was just outright wrong. So this video is made to address the comments that I'm getting on that just so you guys can understand where I was coming from with it. I will own up when I'm wrong to something and for some of these I was just straight up wrong and for some of them I just misworded myself. So starting with the smallest thing, people are saying that I I said that the game was fully 3D. I never said the game was fully 3D. What I did say was is that FNAF would be interesting in 3D or that the game would look really cool in full 3D. I know that this is still the same type of game that Scott made. It's still on the same scale of the games that Scott made, but FNAF 4 already looked really 3D and that's kind of what I see with this game too, is that you're actually in a real 3D room. If you go back to FNAF 1, it does not give you the illusion that you're in a three-dimensional room. Instead, it's just an image sliding back and forth, and it's honestly the ugliest of all the FNAF games. And it's really hard to go back and experience the original FNAF because of that limitation. So it was really cool to see this game where you can actually turn and see the walls. You can actually interact with stuff on different walls. It really makes it feel like you're in a cramped little office. And that's what I was trying to get at. I wasn't saying that the game is built in a 3D engine or that it's gonna be like security breach. I was just getting at the fact that the room looks 3D. I misworded myself on that and I really feel like I could have worded myself better. So now on to the second subject. Um, this one I just straight up messed it up. I got this wrong completely. I said that the game was past its date. That it was past the release date. This game has not had a set release date and I just completely misremembered what had gone on with the development of this game. I'll explain myself but there's no excuse this game does not have a release date and never had a release date. So when I thought that it had a release date, I was remembering last year when the game switched from in development to being coming soon. And I guess my thoughts last year was coming soon meant coming later this year. And then when it didn't come out, I thought it missed its deadline. So that was really just a misremembrance on my part. And I kind of went into that same mentality this year when I saw coming soon still. There's never been a date tied to it. They've never went past the date so I was completely wrong on that but one thing I will say as a complaint is, is that when I went to go back to do research for this video I went to the YouTube page because when it comes to the companies like Nintendo, Sega, Sony, Xbox, I can go to their YouTube page for the games that they're promoting and get a gist of the game and what it will be like from watching the trailers and looking into what's been released video-wise. Meanwhile with this, if you go to the YouTube channel, there's nothing in the description of the YouTube channel, and most of the videos are just like ARG things. They're more like VHS horror style videos. They barely have anything to do with the actual gameplay. Like it doesn't even really show off the gameplay. It's a very weird way to market your game and I kind of wish that they would have just said here's what we're going for with the game here's what the game is going to be coming soon but instead the trailers are just really vague and cryptic and most of them are just trying to do like VHS horror which is really big for FNAF but it's just a very strange way to market your game People did point out to me though that the place to go to get updates is the Steam page. I wouldn't have thought to go to the Steam page because like the Steam page is for when you're ordering the game. I kind of figured that the YouTube page would have some type of information, but if you do go to the Steam page, there is information about what type of game it's going to be, how it's being made, what they're expecting from it. I kind of wish that that information was elsewhere, but yeah, I guess that's a thing. Some people said that I should have went to Twitter to get this information. Well, that's kind of confusing because Fiznom has his own public social media accounts and then he also has the FNAF plus social media accounts so that can be kind of confusing the marketing is all kind of weird and finding updates is weird that's why I kind of said that I wish that this was a normal game being made by a normal developer because then at least I would know like easily what type of game it is what they're going for when it's coming out because corporations tend to be very on the nose with this stuff the original FNAF games were pretty straightforward with what they were going to be so I guess that that's really 
really my mess up and I should have put in more effort to dig through stuff to figure out what type of game this was going to be and if it was going to have a release date. Misremembrances on my part completely messed up there. And now for the last thing, I said that I wish that this was being made by a normal developer. And some people took that as an insult towards uh, Fizzom. There's nothing wrong with being a one-man team. Scott is a one-man team. But the difference between Scott and Fizznom, Scott worked for himself. Meanwhile, Fizznom is part of the Fazverse initiative, meaning that he is holding this thing together along with everybody else. And the longer he takes to release his game, the less hype there could be for the initiative. Now, I know that some people want to treat this like it is a fan game, but the truth is, is that this isn't a fan game. This is being made for profit. You are going to have to pay to play this game. This game is going to have merchandise. This is an actual product that you can buy. It's an actual product that's going to have stuff tied to it. And it's just weird to see that this is an actual thing being funded and being sold. Meanwhile, it's not being treated like it's a real thing. The development is weird. The information is scarce. And to find the information, you have to dig through several different social media platforms. I guess my big thing was I wish Fizzom was a bit more professional with his game. But that seems to be a bigger problem with the Fazverse as a whole. Because these are just normal people plucked into the position of being a developer. I have no issues with him as a developer. And I'm really amazed with what he is doing with this game. I'm just not personally hyped for it because I've already he played two to three different FNAF 1 remakes in the span of his remake being made. Like, I've already played so many different FNAF 1 remakes. Maybe I'll be wrong and his will have like some big behind the scenes feature that he's not showing off right now. Maybe it'll have full cutscenes or something in an actual story mode. Who knows? But from what I've seen of it, I'm just not hyped for it. I can understand why everyone else would be, and my video was never meant to be a hit piece on him. I just wish that he would be more upfront about when the game is going to come out, what a timeline for the game's development is looking like, and maybe give us more concrete updates on what the game is even like where it's even at in development right now because it was in development now it's coming soon that's so vague so weird and vague but yeah uh hopefully that addressed some of the comments um i'm not claiming to be a professional youtuber guy i mess up i make mistakes i don't always word myself the best hopefully uh this at least addressed some of the comments so I guess some people are so tired of waiting for FNAF Plus to come out that they've decided to make FNAF Plus on their own. And it's not that good. So the YouTuber Lost Paul Play decided that he was going to try to make his own version of FNAF Plus and supposedly he only spent a day developing the original game. And this was called I Made FNAF Plus in a Day. And the whole gimmick behind it is, is that he just wanted to make some Something to keep people busy while they wait for the official release of the game. And honestly, after having looked at it and getting my hands on it myself, uh, FNAF Plus, this guy's version of it, is not that good. And I would honestly say that it's not even as good as the original Five Nights at Freddy's. And this is not too shit on the guy making the game at all. It's really difficult to make a well-balanced FNAF game. There's a lot of things that go into it. It seems like it's really simple. You just make a camera watching simulator, but it's more complex than that. And the main thing that is important with any Five Nights at Freddy's game or fan game is the animatronics and the animatronic patterns and difficulties. Well, in this version of FNAF Plus, it's not satisfying to watch the cameras because all of the images on the cameras are really blurry and distorted to show, like, that the game isn't really that good because like he's kind of just improvising random assets into it so in the attempts to cover up how sloppy this game was put together it ends up looking even more sloppy because you can barely make out what's on any of the cameras and it's on like a cool edgy way it's more of a i put this in photoshop for five minutes and i don't want you to notice the faults kind of way the camera static doesn't sound good and the overall visuals that weren't just taken from the 
official FNAF Plus are not good and in some versions of the game are actually comically bad. And yet again, I, I say this because it's like, this is a fan product. This is being made by one guy. This was just made on a whim, but it is just not fun to play. It is not fun to watch other people play it. Um, the AI on the animatronics make no sense because normally Foxy is the type to rush your door and try to attack you and you have to block the door immediately. Um, with the Foxy, in this guy's version of the game he'll just appear in your room like golden freddy and you have to like flick the camera to get him to go away flick the little tablet so that can already be confusing for people who are used to like literally every other version of classic foxy um i've seen people try to close the door when chica's in front of it and they'll close the door in time but chica will still pop out so chica is more aggressive like freddy where freddy you would have to close the door permanently and just wait for him to leave because he was really aggressive. Chica is supposed to be kind of one of the easy animatronics, so it's weird that Foxy was nerfed into being like Golden Freddy, and Chica was buffed into being like regular Freddy. So already like just the animatronic behaviors make the game unsatisfying. But the thing that really kind of ruins the whole experience of this game is that it doesn't feel like a coherent game. I would have rather this guy make his own assets than to just like plunder the assets of the official game because it doesn't actually feel like you're in a real environment. It feels like you're in someone's slideshow of a real environment. It's actually worse looking than FNAF 1. And that's a complaint that I had back when I talked about FNAF Plus before the official FNAF Plus is that it's better than FNAF 1 because FNAF 1 felt like it was just one image sliding back and forth. Well, that problem is back in this fan game, but it's even worse because the images aren't in that good of quality. So the animatronics don't look good. The animatronic AI patterns are all over the place. The game doesn't look or feel good and it's just not fun to play. So I I would say that in the attempts to try to have a game for you to play while you wait for FNAF Plus, this fan-made FNAF Plus is honestly not good for that purpose, and I kind of wish that it had its own subtitle rather than fan-made FNAF Plus, because it's more like FNAF Plus D- or FNAF D-, something like that would be a more befitting name because this is not a good substitution. This is like literally the meme where it's like, Mom, can I play FNAF Plus? No, we have FNAF Plus at home. And then this is FNAF Plus at home. How do you feel about this so luminous? I think he should have made his own environment, like assets. I know that's hard, but it would have looked a lot better than just the images he took from FNAF Plus to slap it to the game. Because that's what Scott did at least. Yeah, it's static images, but he still made them so it looks a lot better. And from what I've seen, this just looks infuriating to play because the AI makes no sense on the animatronics like you said like after the third attempt i'd probably just quit because it's the amount of times i've seen people just they see chica in the door they close the door chica still kills him it's like what are you supposed to do there and it just it looks like a confusing mess it does not look that good it does not seem like a good thing to tide you over until the actual fnaf plus comes out there are plenty of other fnaf one remakes and fan versions you could play until fnaf plus comes out i don't recommend this one yeah so overall I appreciate the effort that was put into this, what little effort there was, but honestly, I think this needs to just have a whole new coat of paint thrown on it. I think it needs to be completely overhauled, and I really think that it needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. Trying to be a knockoff FNAF Plus isn't really a good idea, and I kind of wish that this guy would make his own FNAF game with its own aesthetics and its own vibe and feeling. I'm having a real bad case of deja vu, because I could have sworn that we already talked about the FNAF Plus bootleg that came out several months ago. People talked about it, some people pretended like it was the real FNAF Plus, and then I thought we moved on wasn't that good it wasn't really worth talking about well for some reason it's back and weirdly enough it's actually good now so the fnaf plus fan game is back and now it's actually being labeled as a fan game so what do i have to say about this first of all i want to get all of the negative opinions out of the way this is not representative of what FNAF Plus is going to be. It can't be because we don't know anything about FNAF Plus because it still isn't out. And it'll probably be a while till it does come out. So overall, this is just a game made to get 
YouTubers to clickbait people and to give YouTubers a FNAF Plus to deliver to the audience. Since Fiznom couldn't release FNAF Plus in time, the hype train has to keep going, so we'll make our own fake FNAF Plus and pretend like it came out. This is the second time we made a fake FNAF Plus to ride the hype train. I don't know how many more fake FNAF Pluses we will get until the real game comes out, but I guess I'll start keeping count. So, weirdly enough, this game isn't bad like the last one, it's actually pretty good. It's a nice recreation of FNAF 1. I haven't really played it yet, but the office looks pretty good. The window mechanic looks really good. The doors look pretty satisfying to click down, and the jump scares are actually pretty terrifying. I want to know if you guys think I should play this. If you think I should, comment down below and I might do a review about it. But from what I've seen, it looks good, and I kind of want to praise it. But also, on the other hand, I realize that this game might just be bad for FNAF Plus. Now, Fiznom is on record saying that he doesn't care, and I don't expect him to care. He doesn't really like the FNAF fandom anymore, and he isn't really rushing to get his game out, so I know that his uh, caring level is pretty low right now. But for me, I think that with all these fake FNAF Pluses coming out in the waves that they are coming out, it's going to get people fatigued of the idea of FNAF Plus, because we're seeing the same aesthetics over and over again, the same general gameplay over and over again. So when the final game does come out and you're supposed to pay for it, some kids are just not going to bother because they've already gotten the game for free and they already gotten the game from YouTubers. They won't really care about all the extra features and the minute details of your FNAF Plus because they already have their FNAF Plus at home. So that's why I still kind of call these bootlegs because they do kind of serve as a replacement for the product that doesn't exist. And I think over time it will actually diminish the idea of a FNAF Plus. But on the positive side, this is just a really good FNAF 1 remake. I, I like FNAF 1. It's my favorite FNAF game. So I am really interested in this and it does look really, really good. And I kind of want to play it myself, but I I'm just mixed on it. I'm just really mixed on it because I, I just want the real game to come out. I want to be able to play the real game. I think everyone just wants to be able to play the real game, but we can't. So here we are again with another FNAF Plus bootleg. I'll see you in a few months when we do the same song and dance again, because the real game still won't be out. So a while ago, we talked about Fiznom on this channel, and when we talked about Fiznom, it was because he hadn't released FNAF Plus. We talked about that game a few times, and honestly, I said that he doesn't seem like he's a real developer. He seems like he's a social media star who just so happened to make a fan game that Scott liked and wanted to put in the fanverse. He doesn't act like a professional, he isn't fit to be a professional, and I estimated that we weren't getting this game anytime soon because of his childish behavior. Well, he recently got into another controversy and we're going to be talking about this, and unlike everybody else on YouTube who's done a video thus far, we're not on Fiznom's side. We disagree with Fiznom. So let me start this by saying, I am not a stan for FNAF Security Breach, but I am all about being professional. There will never be a point where Scott Cawthon goes on his account and trash talks the people who made that game, that being Steel Wolf, or the people who made FNAF AR. Like, he won't do that because he's a professional and there's no reason to trash talk the people that are on your team. Like, I get the fact that Fiznom isn't personally connected to these people and isn't personally connected to this game, but he could agree to disagree and be more polite about it, seeing how the guy who employs him is literally in charge of these games and trashing these games makes him look bad too. There's a way to disagree with something and not be a jerk about it. And Fiznom doesn't know how to do that. And that's a very bad thing. So Fiznom apparently got harassed by his fans to cover the new FNAF DLC, that being Ruin. This is free DLC and it's actually a full additional campaign for the game. 
if you've already bought the base game. It's a really nice gesture from the developers to uh, give you guys something more because they honestly felt bad for the first game being cut up and being glitchy and all the problems that it had. So Fitzon played it and he hated it because he didn't like the original game. When it comes to Security Breach, if you like the first half, you'll probably really like the second half. But if you didn't like the first half, this is just more of that, more stuff you don't like. I think the big reason why he doesn't like it is because FNAF is turning 10 years old and he grew up with the old FNAF back when things were all about gruesome murders and haunted animatronics and all the convoluted lore. I don't think that he liked the neon glam rock aesthetic, the weird 80s aesthetic to it. He didn't like the more Katie direction. He didn't like that this franchise that was gritty to a degree was now all clean and polished and goofy. And I get it. A lot of people don't like the sci-fi direction, but that's where the franchise is going. So he didn't have any nice words to say about this. And a lot of people gave him backlash over this stream. Well, one person decided to make a tweet about it. This person's name is Alex. And their tweet is obviously satirical. It's a joke. If you go on this guy's Twitter long enough, you can see that he is constantly joking. And this person also happens to be a minor. Well, the people who are obsessed with Fiznom and are in his cult of personality, and the people who, I guess you could say, stan him, have decided to take everything that this child is tweeting about, which are obvious jokes, and have decided to twist it to be uber serious and to be an actual attack on Fiznom and his opinion. Which is golden because Fiznom's entitled to his opinion, but the kid isn't entitled to their opinion. It's kind of weird like that. But if this was just a back and forth on Twitter, it wouldn't really matter. But what makes it different is the fact that this kid ended up starting to get death threats, ended up getting gore sent to them, ended up getting their servers raided, all because they made jokes on Twitter towards Fiznom. It'd be like if fans of Security Breach did all of that to Fiznom. It'd be messed up. It'd be completely messed up. But instead of just telling people to not do that, Fiznom instead makes a fake apology and Rick rolls the kid. Because that's really professional. Later on, when he was getting a ton of backlash, he did do a real apology. But at that point, it's like Logan Paul going out into the forest. You know what happened there. It's a, I have to apologize because I'm in a lot of trouble. It's not a genuine apology. And I, I'm going to stick with that. It's not a genuine apology. If it was a genuine apology, you would have done it the first time. But basically, he tries to apologize to this guy. He gets joked on more. He calls for Fiznom to be fired, which I'm mixed on this. Because for me, I think Fiznom is extremely unprofessional. I think Fiznom is not fit to be a developer. I don't think Fiznom has people skills. I don't think Fiznom is good for Scott, and I don't think he's good for the FNAF brand. And considering that we've had Lady Fitzy act crazy, we had Kane Carter get into crazy dramas, we've had actual pedophiles in the fandom, in the, in the fanverse, we've had so many things go wrong with this, we do not need this guy also acting like this. Right now, the fanverse is a complete and utter joke, and it is people like him acting like this that make it a joke. So, things continue on the way that they are. He keeps doubling down and tripling down and acting more childish. People ask him, when is FNAF Plus coming out? And because he's the memester, he's, he's a real good joker, he decides to say that it's been done, which is probably breaking all types of contracts that he has. Like, people sign non-disclosure agreements. So I'm pretty sure that can get you in trouble. And that for every day that people ask about it, he delays the game's release. Which, that makes you look bad. That makes Scott look bad for employing you. That makes everyone look bad. Because you're saying that a game is done. 
and you're holding it hostage because people don't like you. Now, here's the thing. I'll give you benefit of doubt, just like I did with the kid. It's a joke. But the thing that separates you from the kid is you work for Scott. You work for a company. You work for a major IP. You have to act professional. Meanwhile, the literal child doesn't. If you want to go back to your youth and be a trolling child, you can do that away from Scott. And it would appear that that has happened. I cannot confirm this, but Biznom has been removed from the FNAF Plus uh, Steam page, and he is banned from interacting with the community. And honestly, I think that's better. I think that because he doesn't like the fandom, he doesn't like the stuff coming out from other people who work with FNAF, and he doesn't seem to like anyone but his own group of people, him and Kane Carter's people. It's probably best for him to just step away, even if it's forced, stepped away. But I'm curious what you think, though, Luminous. Please give me your insight on this. I think he is just incredibly unprofessional, like you said, because he didn't just make a fake apology where he rickrolled the kid. The kid showed proof that he was being sent gore and stuff on an alt account, and allegedly, Iznom liked it, which would show that he, he uh, did see it. I'm saying allegedly, because I don't think there has been evidence of that, but he then proceeded to rickroll the kid, and I'm pretty sure before that, he was making meme posts about him getting the death threats which is like it's ridiculous it's incredibly unprofessional his you are absolutely 100% allowed to have your your likes and your dislikes your criticisms if you don't like security breach and you don't like ruin that's fine you are allowed to critique it but since you are connected to the games to the fandom so directly by being a fan first creator i think you should be more professional with it more professional with your critiques don't just go oh this sucks oh that sucks oh uh, like because it seems like every time i hear something about pizam it's him talking about how much he hates the fandom how much he hates fnaf which just has me questioning if he hates it so much why doesn't he work to get his game done faster and publish it because he is allegedly had it done for, I think it was three months now. He has allegedly had the game done for three months, according to him. Uh, whether he likes or whether he's being honest or not, it could be a joke. If he doesn't like it and he wants to be done with it, why hasn't he just released the game already? That's what I want to know the most. And honestly, just because of how unprofessional he is and how bad he makes the rest of the fanverse in the community look, I think it's good for him to be separated. I don't think he should work for Scott anymore. I don't think he should have any connection to the series anymore. His game should just be released and he should be done with it. Because he is not a positive person to have in the community. He is someone who is actively saying he doesn't like FNAF. Repeatedly saying how much he doesn't like FNAF. And then is still like heavily tied to FNAF because of the game he's making. So I just think that's a bad look. I just, with how unprofessional he is, I just, I really think he should just be gone. So I guess the final thoughts of it all is, is that if you represent a company and you represent a corporation, you have to leave the troll persona behind. You have to act with some level of professionalism. And if someone starts memeing on you on Twitter and you don't have anything nice to say, then uh, don't respond. And if you see that this person is being harassed, don't meme on it further. If you are the professional involved, you should immediately chastise it and be done with it. 
I'm not going to go complete smooth brain and say he controls his audience. He sent the people to do it. I'm sure he doesn't even like that it happened. But the reality of it is, is that he had a chance to stop it early on. He had a chance to at least chastise and wash his hands of it. And he chose not to, which led to this person getting more harassment because that only validates the people harassing them that it's okay to do it by participating in it yourself. This is not something that is rare for Fiznom. Him and Kane Carter act like this to people. It's really unprofessional, and I'd be shocked if we get the fan first wave too. To me, I'm gonna go full. I'm gonna go full Theft King here and just say the fan verse is dead. Like, it is completely dead. And I don't care if, like, they get merch. I don't care if they release the games. Like, it took way too long for these games to come out. Like, multiple people involved with this have been dropped because of their unprofessional behavior toward minors. <laughs> like, this is a failure. In all sense, it's a failure. And people like Kane Carter can continue saying that it's not. You can continue saying blah, 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 whatever. But to me, it's a failure. Because the few successes you've gotten, like, majorly are outweighed by the controversies, the drama, the full-on, like, full-scale wars going on over this project. This was supposed to bring the fandom together and give a way for talented developers to profit off of making fan games. But instead, it gave a few egotists the power to completely tear apart this fandom. And I honestly feel bad for the fans because this could have been something really good. And I honestly am disappointed in all of the developers who's acted like this. That goes for everyone that we've talked about in all of our episodes involving this project. And yes, this is going to be in the playlist about the fanverse and why it was terrible. Because the fanverse is the gift that keeps on giving for anyone who has issues with the FNAF fandom. And honestly, I love the fandom. I love the fans. I don't like cult of personalities, and I don't like people who actively say they hate the fandom and hate the games, but continue to lurk because they have nothing better. Like, get a life get a new thing to obsess about quit latching onto the one thing that you're relevant in and do something else that is all i have to say be nice to people when you represent a company because you're not just representing yourself you're representing scott you're representing all the other people who work on fnaf try to be a bit professional this wouldn't fly in any other job and we're at least seeing now that it doesn't fly here and i'm not saying that Kane Carter should be next, like some people are saying. I'm saying that this should be a sign to Kane Carter to act more professional, because he should have been from the start. I also want to add real quick that everyone who was just saying that Biznom is just being attacked for his opinion on Ruin is incredibly disingenuous. Well, yes, I'm sure that is happening. That is not why people are mad at him. And I think everyone trying to say that that is all that is happening, like, you're doing a disservice. Because you are misinforming people. Whether you are intentionally doing it or not, I think you should be looking further into the situation. Because just to say that he's being attacked for saying that he doesn't like Ruin and saying that it sucks, it that is completely incorrect with how the situation is going. And I do not appreciate it. But yeah, we are going to be covering more of this as it continues. I don't want to make this a complete drama channel, but the fanverse stuff has been something I covered all the way back before we started talking about FNAF, and I feel personally connected to it, so I'm going to continue talking about this. Hopefully it improves, and hopefully everyone involved can improve, and we only hope the best for Scott and for the FNAF fandom as a whole. So Fiznom did the thing that I didn't honestly expect him to do, judging by his character. He made a video responding to all the drama that's going on. And both me and Luminous have taken notes, and we're going to address why his response video is bad. 
Don't expect this to be extremely professional because we did just jog down notes because we didn't want to watch this whole video in a live format. We're going to do that maybe for someone else later, but for his video, it'd be way too mean and we'd just be making fun of him. So let's get into this with my opinions on his video first. So at the beginning, he talks about how he streamed FNAF Ruin and when I watched his stream, yes, I found an archive, you can actually go on the Wayback Machine, he did not engage with his audience about the game. He didn't engage with the game. All they did was try to force memes, mainly that being involving the mimic and how everyone's overhyping it. So funny. And he never really told a joke that I liked, but that's a subjective thing. The stream wasn't good. It wasn't funny and I honestly clicked off halfway through it. Maybe it's just like that meme where you're digging for diamonds and you're almost there, and I turned away at the last second, but from what I saw, it wasn't funny, and I didn't think it was going to get funny. In the actual response part of the video, which somehow takes place after him talking about the stream for some reason, he talks about the victim, and when talking about the victim, he left out the fact that he rickrolled them and actively memed on them he kind of vaguely brought it up so he may have referred to it but i've watched the video three times now and he did not make it clear that he was talking about anything he did harass the kid he did rick roll the kid he did engage in some of the harassment he didn't tell people to send them gore he didn't send gore and stuff himself but he did play a part in the harassment, and he is still not owning up for that. He never really apologized to the kid, and he says that it's not an apology stream or apology video, but then goes on to apologize for his friends at the end. So I guess if you're a friend, someone who he actually cares about, it is an apology video. But if you're some rando pretending to be hurt, according to him, pretending to be hurt, then no, you don't get anything. I'm just going to explain why you're wrong. Because that's what empathetic people do. He never seemed like he was upset or sorry towards the victim involved at all. He constantly used manipulative language to build the victim up as someone that's untrustworthy, someone who had been banned and created alt accounts to continue to interact with him, and paints him as someone who is trying to use him for clout and is an attention seeker so that it can delegitimize the stuff that they went through. He says that the, the stuff that they were sent was actually stuff that they were into. So basically he's saying that because they're into gore, the fact that people sent them gore isn't that bad. Because they're into this stuff, it's not bad that it happened. It's okay if the minor gets sent messed up adult material. They're into it, according to Fiznom's logic. He implies that the harassment that the kid was getting wasn't that bad because they had their DMs open and were accepting people into their server, which is completely ludicrous. They shouldn't have to go total lockdown because they're getting harassed by your fans. And just because they have their stuff open and are probably banning each and every person who harasses them, doesn't mean that the harassment isn't existing. That is ridiculous. Makes excuses on why he didn't seriously respond before, which they vary in a multitude of degrees. That being that uh, he didn't think it was serious, he didn't see a point in doing it, and he didn't want to cause more trouble. Those are all reasonings that he gave, all the reasonings being bad. He tries to say people who harass the kid didn't identify as his fans, when there's no proof to that at all. It's not a group of trolls trying to frame you. That's completely ridiculous. They probably were your fans, if not almost definitely your fans. Quit trying to muddy the waters. He didn't get upset until his friend Doggo disapproved of his behavior. And as far as I'm seeing so far, like... His friends being upset with him is the only time that he actually cares, almost like he's caring to save face. Then makes a generic disclaimer tweet, talking about how he'll remove harmful fans and block people that are toxic. Even though he has a toxic attitude and embraces a troll persona, basically fostering a toxic fandom. So I don't know how he could even try to do that 
with the type of people that he's gathering, but whatever. He spins a sad story about how he's a troll for fun and never wanted anyone to get hurt, but actively participated in harassing a child after knowing it was a child, that he likes being hated and wants no responsibilities, and how he doesn't like having an important job and how that stresses him out. That he didn't want to be the head of the FNAF fanverse or one of the pillars of the FNAF fanverse initiative. How he didn't want to have this big successful job and have people like him. And that you should feel bad for him because, oh my god, he just happened to succeed. Yeah, we all feel bad for you. Worried about his trolling hurting others, but still doesn't want to stop trolling because... When you're really worried about people getting hurt by the things you do, you keep on doing them. That's the good bit of logic from Fiznom. He said that he was trying to be professional, but I have been following this project since day one, and I can tell you that's not the case. I covered FNAF Plus four months ago, and it was extremely unprofessional. If you were trying to be professional, dear god I'd hate to see you really try to not be professional because you're really bad at it. You're really bad at being professional. He regrets being in the fanverse. He didn't say that directly, but he basically heavily implied it. He didn't want to be bugged about his game FNAF Plus, which is why he started telling people that he was going to delay it every time they asked him about it, because that's what trolls do. They get personally offended by things and then get really defensive about it. That's a troll strategy. He whines about being an e-celeb, another troll strategy and how he didn't want to be internet famous, and how he just wants to make jokes and be left alone. More troll behavior, I guess. And uh, then he talks about his stalker, but I'm personally not touching that, because it has literally nothing to do with everything that matters, that being the minor that's involved. The stalker stuff is really sketchy, and I'm not going to talk about it. It seems like that stuff has already been settled and is only being thrown in here to gather more sympathy and to give the stalker attention. And I feel like talking about the stalker, saying their name or anything will only cause them to harm themselves more. So I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. He can do that. Other people can do that. I'm not doing that. But that's all my thoughts on this, Luminous. How do you feel about Fiznom's response video? Personally, I'm not happy with the video. Like, in the slightest. Uh, uh, first of all, like you said, it's not an apology video. That's clear. Like, he does verbally say in the video that it's not an apology video at the very beginning, which is fine. Except for the fact that Later in the video, he does go on to apologize to his friends, who I'm sure probably were hurt by his actions, but weren't the biggest victim in all of it. He'll apologize to his friends, people he cares about, but someone that he clearly directly hurt by his harassment that he got sent to them by making fun of the situation and rickrolling them, like, he would have been participating in the harassment and he does not apologize to the victim in that. So I have an issue with it there. I think it would have been fine if it wasn't an apology, if he didn't then go on to apologize to his friends. I, just, I really didn't like that. He says he doesn't represent FNAF, which is true, he no longer represents FNAF, but the way he posted at the beginning, to me made it feel like he was saying that he's never represented FNAF, and that could just be my interpretation of it, but if you are hired by Scott and you are working directly for him, you are making a fan game for him in the Fanverse Initiative. Like, you are being physically paid to make the game. You are a part of the Fazverse universe. Also, the game he's remaking is the very first FNAF game, the one that built the whole franchise. Let's not forget that. Yeah, exactly. Like... From what I'm aware, everyone else that's making a fan game is making it with their characters and their own, like, part of the universe. Where Fiznom is directly remaking FNAF 1. So, I just, I really didn't like the fact that he worded it the way he did. Again, maybe it's just me. But it felt 
like it was manipulative. And I'm not really shocked because the whole video felt manipulative. Uh, he claims that he blocked the kid because they were underage previously. But if that's true, how did the kid retweet Biznom in the first place? I suppose he could have screenshotted it or got a screenshot of it from somewhere. But, like, I saw it and it didn't look like that. I could be misremembering it because it was a few days ago and it's been deleted since then. But that had me really confused when he said he already had the kid blocked. So I don't know about that one. He doesn't address the fact that after the kid showed him that he was being sent gore, he proceeded to fake an apology to him and rickrolled him. And I can only imagine that's because... He knows that would make him look bad, and he was heavily downplaying how much of a he was being to the kid. And this kid who was being harassed and proved that he was being sent harassment, he further harassed. He further got harassment sent to him. Because even if the people who saw Fizzum's tweet didn't go and send the kid more gore or death threats, there is a fair chance that because he did that, People saw it as an okay thing to do to go and harass the guy further with maybe memes or just insults. I don't know, but it seemed like he was inciting more harassment to the kid with that. And I think that's why he didn't include the fact that he rickrolled him. He does claim that he looked further into it after the kid sent him the proof. But again, after he looked into it more, he still proceeded to rickroll him. And he didn't tell people to not send death threats to anyone until hours after the fact when one of his friends, someone he looked up to, disavowed his actions. I don't think he cared at all until someone he cared about spoke up and said something. And he proceeds to downplay the harassment the victim got because he allegedly liked the kind of stuff that he was being sent anyways. Which, even if he did, that's a disgusting reason to say that it's fine that he was getting that. And says that he was also getting positive attention from it, so he didn't care. Claiming that the kid was happy about the positive influx. I just think that's ridiculous, because even if the kid was getting positive reactions from it after he called him out and people were like, that's messed up. I'm so sorry that happened to you. And trying to, like, I guess, comfort him in a way. There's no excuse for you to be like, oh, see, he's fine. He's being comforted. I, it's fine. But it's not fine. It's not fine. It's disgusting. He tries to give explanations for the way he behaves, but the entire time it felt more like he was giving excuses more than explanations. And there is a difference. You can explain why you behave away without making it feel like you're making an excuse. And the entire time, it made it feel like he was trying to excuse his behavior, not explain it. And I think that is an important distinction to make. And again, like, he says he doesn't want to be a pillar of the community either, despite taking an active role in the community by being as public as he is and being a part of the Fan First initiative. I really don't know how much of a bigger pillar of the community you could be. And then, he, like, he also was getting upset that people were perceiving him the way that he presents himself in public. Like, if you present yourself as being toxic, people are going to perceive you as being toxic. That's just how that works. And then he proceeds to try to get people to pity him, and he is trying to garner sympathy throughout the video. Like, it honestly just felt so manipulative. I just, I did not like the video one bit. It does not feel like he is taking any sort of accountability or responsibility for what happened. Okay, so I guess uh, final thoughts are, in this video, Fiznom confirms that he has been let go of from the Fazverse Initiative. We were right, he was fired. He is done, and he cannot have any say in the game whatsoever. He acts like that's a good thing. I think that's a bad thing personally for him. It's a good thing for the community, but he is 100% gone from this game. 
Which means that FNAF Plus might actually come out now. There might be an actual release date now since professionals are handling it. So that's good for everyone. And really, I guess this whole video was a giant waste of time. He didn't say anything new. He didn't really bring any smoking gun to the table. He kind of just stated what he had already said before. And his fan base ate it up and went, Yes, he is good. He is innocent. Victim bad. And I guess that's how discourse works now. You just keep responding until the other side gives up. And then you're the winner. That is how discourse works. The reality of it is, and this is what I've heard from all of his defenders, I have not heard any of them try to explain why he harassed the victim. Why did Fiznam participate in harassing the victim? He participated in it. He made it clear to his fandom that it was okay to harass this child. He is the one who sent them the Rickroll. He is the one who continued to make fun of them. He is the one who set the precedence that it is okay to harass people online. And then he wants to act like that he didn't do that and downplay it. And honestly, because of his behavior and because of the amount of excuses he made, I can only see him as a cry bully. And I can only see him as having a cult of personality. And people don't care if he's professional or not. People don't care if he's a good person. People only want to watch his streams. Which, if you're one of those people, good for you. Good for you. Go have fun watching his stuff. But don't act like he's innocent. Don't act like he's a good person. Because he'll tell you himself, except for when it hurts him and his friends, that he's toxic. And that he's not a good person and that you shouldn't look up to him these are all his own words so yeah i stand by my stance that he is the most bitter person to be involved with fnaf but i am very very glad that he is not involved with fnaf so over four months ago me and luminous made a video talking about fnaf plus and we talked about how unprofessional its page was how it got little to any advertising how it was confusing to even find out info on it, and how unprofessional its developer Fiznom was. Well, here recently we did two videos on Fiznom. We were going to do a third one, but because of this announcement, we decided not to. So, sleep live, your bad video gets to live another day. But when it comes to the FNAF Plus project, I'm not happy that it got cancelled. I'm actually really sad. I'm a big fan of FNAF 1. I think FNAF 1 had the best atmosphere out of all the FNAF games. I think FNAF 1 is still the best of the FNAF games. So it's really sad to see such an ambitious remake of FNAF 1 go. But the writing was kind of always on the wall with how Fiznom acted, with how the pages were set up, the fact that people continuously kept making fan game knockoff bootlegs and nothing was done about it. You try to make a new version of the game Nintendo's working on, and that thing won't live to see the light of day. Almost the same thing for Sega and any other company. You're not allowed to make bootlegs of people's stuff. And people said that it was a fan game. No, it's not a fan game. If it takes up the same place and market as the original game, it's a bootleg. You made a bootleg of FNAF Plus. Everyone who kept doing that, you made bootlegs of FNAF Plus. But the thing is, is that not only did Fizzom not take down these projects, he didn't care that they existed. He didn't play them. He didn't see them. He was just completely oblivious because Phil existed in his own world. He was separate from the FNAF fandom and didn't really care what was going on in it. And all these were signs that this project was doomed completely doomed and with its death is another thing gone from the fanverse initiative right now it's starting to look like the channel awesome situation where all there's going to be is kane carter kane carter will be the last man standing in this race 
I know that we still have like two other reasonable developers. The guy who made Five Nights at Candy's and the guy who made um, The Joy of Creation. But it's getting close. I don't, we're, we're getting I don't close. think he's actually working for it. Is he? I is he not? I he don't think he is. Oh. He's listed, but I think he's working with other people because I think the well, whatever. only Whatever. I'm still including it. I said the guy, okay. not the project. Okay. But yeah, um, just those two. Those two are the only notable people left <laughs> besides Kane Carter. So soon, it will no longer be the FNAF Fanverse Initiative. It will be the Kane Carter Initiative starring Kane Carter and none of his amazing friends because this whole thing has been a terrible terrible idea it was not a good idea for scott to just pick random people from the internet and the only assurance that they wouldn't mess things up is trust me bro <laughs> this was a terrible idea like if they were people you knew personally and people you knew could handle the responsibilities being thrown on them then okay fine but it seems like to me that Scott's a bad judge of character because we had the Lady Fitzy stuff, we had the Flumpty stuff, we had the Fiznom stuff, everything involving the pair. Like, controversy after controversy for these past two years. And unlike in other fandoms like with Sonic or Minecraft or whatever, these are people personally involved with the stuff being weird degenerates and getting removed from their projects. This isn't fan dev creators or anything. Once you sign that contract for Scott, like, you're official. I don't think anyone understood that they're official. I think people still thought they were making fan art and fan games and never really dropped that childish persona they had before. So yeah, me personally, I would love for this game to come out. I would love for Click Team to finish it, but for right now, from what I'm seeing, because it's removed from the Steam page, and because no one's even talking about it, I think it's just gone. Completely gone. And they're never gonna bring it up again. But how do you feel about this, Luminous? Well, first I wanna say, I think Emil had, has the right idea of just being quiet keeping more to himself like i don't know anything about emil and it doesn't seem like he's gotten into any sort of drama and i think he's the best of them because of that but i do think it is really sad that it did end up getting cancelled because it's it could have so easily avoided not getting cancelled but like we said four months ago the writing was on the wall because of just how immature Fiznam was and how he acted when uh, ripoffs of his game were being made and uploaded for free. I'm not really surprised it ended up cancelled. I'm saddened that it ended up cancelled. I think if he had just been a bit more professional, it wouldn't have been. Like, I don't really think it was that hard to just do your work, get the game done. It's been three years. It's a remake of the first FNAF game, and I don't think it was even a free roam game. I could be mistaken, because I don't really remember that part, but I'm pretty sure it was just, you're sitting in the office. Well, that's, that's a so sad thing. I hate to interrupt you early, but that's a sad thing. We'll never know what FNAF Plus was meant to be. We saw cutscenes of a child walking around the pizzeria. We saw, like, promise of a paranormal investigation. But at the end of the day, the only gameplay we saw was typical FNAF 1 fair sitting down in a room. So who knows what this could be? And it's like I said before when people told me that everything was cinematics, it's like, how much of this game is actually done? Like, if there's hardly any real gameplay being shown, and just stills and random shots, like, was this game even close to ever being done? We'll never know. All we have is Fiznom's word saying that the game was done. But if the game was done, you think they would just release it, right? You think that that would be the case, that they would just hit the release button? So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this game, and I don't think we're going to know until Fiznom's NDA goes up. I just think Fiznom was incredibly irresponsible and i think that i don't think it was just the incident with the kid that got him fired i honestly think that his behavior has probably been 
a problem for a while, and this was just the inciting incident that had Scott just a bit over the edge and fired him. Like, I, I honestly think it was building up. Because if it was just this one incident, I think he could have recovered. I think he could have recovered and still have been working on his project, and the game wouldn't have been cancelled. And I do want to hope that even though it has been taken off of the Steam page, there is the possibility that it might be re-uploaded later, and it might still be released, maybe sometime closer to when the FNAF movie comes out. I don't know. Don't get your hopes up for that, because it might just genuinely just be completely cancelled outright, because after all, it was Fizzdom's project, and he's now fired. So it's hard to say for sure until we get some sort of definite, yes, it is cancelled. It is never coming out. So. I think the final thoughts of this is that the reason why Scott is probably so trigger happy as of late with the Lady Fitzy stuff and now Fiznom is because this is the year the FNAF movie comes out. There are tons of investors involved with this, tons of advertisers involved with this, tons of different hands all in this gumbo at once, and I don't think Scott wants to mess that up. And I don't think that he's going to allow his subordinates who are misbehaving to mess this up. So I think right now, if you're in any controversy, Scott's just going to pull the trigger <laughs> and he's going to eliminate you immediately. And I think that's why we see Kane Carter apologizing refusely and constantly clearing up what's a joke and uh, slowing down on jokes that poke fun at his work conditions or pokes fun at the different games that they're working on. I think it's because everyone's been notified by Scott, stop messing up. And really, they should have been acting this way to begin with. Everyone should have been acting professional. Everyone should have been treating this with the respect it deserved. Scott is someone who deserves your respect. He's a really chill guy. He gave you this opportunity when literally no other studio would. And everyone still messed it up. I don't think there'll be a fanverse wave 2. I don't think there's going to be more games after this because if something as simple as a FNAF 1 remake can go unreleased and get cancelled, what is there any hopes for any other game being made or coming out? I, I know I sound kind of doomer, but right now it kind of is a dooming situation. But I guess on the positive side, we have Help Wanted 2, we have more official stuff from FNAF coming out soon, we have the movie to look forward to, so let's try to, let's try to just cope and deal with the cancellation of FNAF 1 Plus. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. If you guys like this video, like it, share it around to people who like FNAF, and uh, I want to thank everyone who's been subscribing. I appreciate every subscription out there. Hoping to hit 1,000 soon. We are really hyped to talk about all the stuff that's going on. The new merch, the uh, DLC, everything. The new games, the movie when it comes out. So yeah, yeah stick around. Hype. We're going to be doing more stuff soon. Bye.